Hi everyone, this is Elliot from Studio Me, and congrats on making it to part three of the Learning Premiere series. So we've covered everything from importing to sequencing, to assembling footage, and finally to editing footage. But now in this part, we finally get to work on stylizing our video. This means we'll be adding color correction, transitions, titles, and even some effects like the VHS static you saw in our intro. Now that we're done with our editing workspace, it's only natural that we move on to our color workspace next. There are plenty of cool things to do in the color workspace. You've got your basic color correction at the top, creative filters, and vignettes, just to name a few. For the sake of time though, I'm only gonna go over a few of these briefly. Under basic color correction, your most useful tool will probably be the white balance selector. This is an immensely easy way to correct the temperature and tint of your clips. All you do is select the part of the frame that's white, like my shirt here, and presto, it's been color corrected. The selector isn't perfect though, so be sure to adjust things manually if you have to. You can also adjust exposure, contrast, highlights, which is the light pixels in the clip, and shadows, which is the dark pixels in the clip. Next, you have your creative filters, which really shouldn't be touched until after you're done with color correction. This part of the process is what's known as color grading, which always comes after color correction. Last thing to go over is vignetting. You can control whether it's white or black, where the midpoint rests, how round it is, and the amount of feathering or softening it has. The next thing we'll want to do is add a couple fancy effects. So let's go ahead and switch to the effects workspace. First, let's go over the VHS effect I mentioned earlier. This is achieved by getting some stock static footage, which you can easily find on YouTube, and adding it to a layer above the clip that you want to affect. Blend modes are different ways that you can combine layers. They can be found underneath opacity in the effects panel. For a layer with a black background, more than likely you'll be combining it with a screen mode. This is what I used for the intro, but it can't hurt to try out other modes. Keyframes allow you to animate properties within your effects panel. For instance, if you want to make it look like the camera's panning left to right, you can add keyframes to the position property, making it appear that the clip is literally moving from left to right. In our intro, there was a shot with a quick zoom in on my face. To accomplish this, all I had to do was hit the stopwatch here, set my first keyframe, move to where I wanted the animation to end, and set the property to what I wanted it to stop at. This isn't just limited to motion properties though. You can also animate opacity, audio levels, and pretty much anything in the effects panel. There are two ways of creating titles, and both are pretty frustrating. The first is by hitting the shortcut T on your keyboard and selecting a spot in your program panel. The other way, and the way that I'll be going over with more detail in, is by going to File, New, and Legacy Title. This creates a new layer and brings up a brand new window to edit your title in. Nearly all of your tools for styling titles is on the right-hand column. This includes font size, font family, fill types, stroke, shadow, and background. You also have the option to align your text at the top of your window and center it using the buttons on the left-hand column. One last thing to note is that the clip frame that appears in your legacy title window is not permanently linked to the title. Using the playhead, you can actually change the temporary backdrop to any frame you want, since it's only meant to act as a reference. Once you close the legacy title window, this layer will appear in your project panel, which you can then drag over to your timeline. Transitions should almost always be saved for last, since slight trimming and adjustments between your clips will probably continue to the very end of your project, and it can sometimes be pretty difficult to make these adjustments when you've got transitions in the way. So on the right side, under Effects, you'll see Video Transitions. To add them, all you have to do is drag them to the timeline and between the clips you want them to affect. 90% of the time though, you'll be using a cross dissolve or a dip to black transition. So you can actually set one of these to be your default by right clicking and selecting set as default. Once back in your timeline, all you have to do to add this default transition is select between your clips and hit command D. There's plenty of other tips and tricks to transitions, but really that could be a whole other video on that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed part three of this riveting journey. I know I have. The goal of these videos is that by this point, you'll feel comfortable using the various tools in Premiere from start to finish. It's in no way the best way of doing everything, obviously. Um, in fact, the best way of doing it is probably the one you find easiest through experience. So keep practicing this kind of stuff. There's also plenty of tutorials out there for very specific tricks. So you really have no excuse for giving up on Premiere. Also, because I enjoyed this so much, feel free to make any tutorial requests for me to make in the future, and I'll obviously be more than happy to make them.